Bonjour et merci d'être ici si bon matin euh, aujourd'hui. C'est un honneur d'amorcer la deuxième journée de votre conférence annuelle, votre 56e conférence. Actually, I do feel privileged to, to be here at this conference, especially it's not every day you have the Premier to warm up the crowd for you. So, Premier Wynne, along with all members of the Ontario Legislature, had a hand in making Ontario's communities stronger when they introduced legislation last year to give my office oversight of municipalities. So you've gathered here this week to, dis to discuss community building and specifically to discuss strengthening northern communities. You're here because you care about making communities better and you want to improve how Ontario cities and towns serve their citizens. Well, part of making a, a municipality stronger is to make sure that it has strong, accountable leadership from the top down and a way for citizens to ensure that their municipal officials are conducting themselves in the best interests of the community. Now, at my office, we took on the task of taking complaints about Ontario's 444 municipalities on January 1. And I'm here today to assure you that our end goal, a fair and accountable public sector, is the same as yours. So our work is aimed at improving governance. We take complaints about municipal issues and we strive to resolve those complaints. Our aim is to improve the processes and the procedures that created them, ultimately creating a stronger, more sustainable local government. So that's why I'm here today. I want to suggest what you can do at your end to make sure that your complaint procedures are robust and effective. So I want to share a little bit uh, with you about the work that we do, specifically what you can expect if and when we contact you. But first, let me tell you a bit about our office. Now, I know that many of you are familiar with the Ombudsman's office because of our role as closed meeting investigator. Our office has been the investigator for approximately half of all of Ontario's municipalities since 2008. And this has given our staff valuable experience with municipalities and it's helped us understand that you are all different in your own way. It's allowed us to help citizens with hundreds of complaints, and it allows us to help councils ensure that their meeting practices are open, transparent, and consistent with the law. Now, unfortunately, I know that it also led to a lot of confusion and concern in the early days because it cast the Ombudsman's office in a law enforcement role. And for many people, this created the mistaken belief that our role was to police local councils, which is not at all what we do. An enforcement role, in fact, really doesn't let an ombudsman's office play to its strength. What an ombudsman's office normally does, and what our office excels at, is to resolve most complaints informally. Now, we do a great deal of work behind the scenes to humanize government and remove the irritants confronted by citizens. So we look for simple and sensible solutions to problems and usually without having to resort to formal investigations. Now, we have many examples of these individual success stories, and we share them in our annual reports, on our website, in social media, and in our monthly newsletter. And what we've done is already shared several good news stories about municipalities, and I'm sure there'll be many more to come. Now, this is the kind of work that our office has done for more than 40 years at the provincial level, and I think it's helpful to have that historical perspective. I know that from the municipal vantage point, it may seem like Bill 8 and the expansion of our mandate came quickly, but actually it's something that's been discussed since the inception of our office. In fact, the very first ombudsman in Ontario, Arthur Maloney, opened his office in 1975. And right away, he noticed that he was receiving hundreds of complaints that were not about Ontario's provincial government. They were about municipalities, the level of government closest to the people. Unfortunately, the Ombudsman's Act did not allow Mr. Maloney's office to help these people. But as complaints mounted, he called for the act to be amended. And finally it was in 2014. The good news about this long incubation period is that the Ombudsman's office has had 40 years to demonstrate its value to citizens in improving provincial government services. Now that's 40 years of what Mr. Maloney called humanizing government. 40 years of developing relationships with senior public servants 
throughout the provincial bureaucracy, from deputy ministers, ministers right on down the line. And I'll tell you about one particular example that may resonate with you. In our provincial work, we receive complaints every year about the Northern Health Travel Grant. In one case, a few years ago, a woman had to travel from Westry to Sudbury for medical services. Now, Sudbury was 193 kilometers from her home. But in order to qualify for the grant, she had to travel 200 kilometers. She was seven kilometers short, and she wasn't able to get funding for the travel. So we worked behind the scenes to raise concerns with the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care about the need for flexibility in this type of case. And after two years of discussion and review, the Ministry established the Northern Health Travel Grant Medical Appeals Committee to evaluate exceptional circumstances. The committee reviews applications and recommends exceptions to the eligibility criteria. So finally, this woman was granted her allowance. And more recently, a man from right here in Timmins was denied funding to travel to Toronto for a treatment for a chronic asthma. Because the drug was not administered at a ministry-approved facility. However, the manufacturer of the drug had specifically hired this clinic to prepare the drug and monitor patients according to strict specifications. The newly formed committee looked at his case and ultimately reimbursed the man for $6,000 of his travel expenses. So, the legacy of our proactive, collaborative work behind the scenes is a strong foundation for our new jurisdiction, and my goal is to build the same strong working relationship with all of you, as well as our other new stakeholders in universities and school boards. So let me give you a quick primer on how we work. Our office handles more than 20,000 complaints every year, and most of them you never hear about, because they're quickly and quietly resolved, usually by our staff making a few phone calls. But that's the bulk of what we do. We resolve cases quickly, as quickly as possible, and at the lowest level possible. Mon équipe de haute direction et moi, nous rencontrons de façon régulière les responsables des organismes du gouvernement provincial pour les alerter des problèmes et leur donner la possibilité de régler ces problèmes avant que les problèmes n'empirent. My senior team and I also meet regularly with managers of provincial government organizations so we can alert them, alert them to problems and give them a chance to fix them before they mushroom into something worse. And the Northern Health, Health Travel Grant is just an example of this. And so in doing this, we often avert the need for a major investigation simply by making sure that complaints are being addressed by those who are directly responsible. Now, occasionally, we will come across issues that haven't been resolved and that warrant a formal investigation. And even more rarely, we will tackle broad systemic problems that affect hundreds or even millions of people. Now, those are the cases you probably have heard about, such as our in investigation last year into the massive, massive billing problems at Hydro One. Now, in those cases, we will publish a report with recommendations, and those recommendations are almost always accepted. They're almost always accepted because they're feasible and they're sensible, and they improve public services. So our, our aim is not just to resolve individual complaints, but to make sure that the underlying problems are fixed and that future complaints are averted. Now, that's what I call a win-win-win situation. It's a win for my office because our recommendations are accepted. It's a win for the person who complained because the problem is resolved. And it's a win for the public servants involved as well because they're often aware of problems but don't have the wherewithal to get them fixed. And our recommendations, our reports, our observations shine a light on those problems and develop a momentum and impetus for change. And so now, you're probably wondering, how does this apply to municipalities? So I'd like to give you an update on how things have been going since January 1. So we've received more than 1,200 complaints about municipalities so far, from about 250 different municipalities, and 70% of those have already been closed. And how many formal investigations have we launched? As of today, none. And this should not come as a surprise, because the vast majority of complaints have been resolved quickly and informally. That's what we do. Most complaints, more than 700 of them, have been referred back to the proper local mechanisms and to other organizations outside our jurisdiction. Now, in some cases, our staff make informal inquiries with the relevant municipal officials, and most of the time, they are able to resolve problems to everyone's satisfaction. 
all without the need for a formal investigation. And so what are people complaining about? Well, you can probably guess. In the winter, it's snow removal. Now it's water and sewage or garbage collection. Ontario Works, housing programs, and of course bylaw enforcement account for a lot of complaints. I guess customer service in general does too. So we've gotten a few complaints about DSS ABS, or District Social Services Administration Boards, which of course are unique to the North. So we have many good examples of an informal resolution already. A couple of weeks ago, one of our staff helped a 16-year-old homeless youth get Ontario Works funding after it was initially denied at the, at the municipal level. In February, we helped a man sort out long-standing problems with a snow-covered sidewalk in front of his home, and we found out that inadvertently his home had been removed from the removal route. So a few phone calls and that problem was fixed. However, the number one most common topic of complaints so far has been municipal councils themselves. This category includes complaints about council members and their conduct, policies and decisions of council, which generally speaking we do not get involved in, as well as communications and conflict of interest. Now, as the, with all other complaints that we receive, the first thing we do is determine if the matter can be resolved locally. And this is where you can ask yourselves, what can our municipality do to make sure we're able to help our citizens? Do you have a process for handling local complaints? Do you have a code of conduct? You have a local accountability officer, such as a uh, integrity commissioner or an ombudsman or both. All of this will make your municipality more accountable, more open, and ultimately a more democratic government for the people you serve. From the start of this expansion of our mandate, our office has made it clear that we encourage municipalities to have their own accountability officers and clear processes for dealing with complaints. Our role is to be there for your citizens as a last resort. We're there to ensure local mechanisms are working well and recommend ways that they can be improved. And this is exactly what we've done at the provincial level for more than 40 years. We don't substitute ourselves for provincial investigative bodies or administrative tribunals. We don't redo their investigations or reopen their files. Rather, we review the actions that they took and where warranted, we'll rec recommend reforms. And so we're doing the same thing with municipal complaints. And if it's a matter that the municipality or its integrity commissioner or local ombudsman is dealing with, we won't intervene. If those avenues have been exhausted or if it's beyond their scope, then we will review it. Now we'll look at the circumstances and the reasons for the decision. Did your officials act in accordance with the relevant legislation? Did they consider the issues? Did they give sufficient written reasons for their decision? That's the type of thing that we look at. And so we help improve the process for all concerned. For example, a council member complained that she was not told that the integrity commissioner's report on her conduct would be discussed in an open meeting. After our staff made informal inquiries with the municipality, it made changes to ensure that all parties are given clear information about how code of conduct issues are handled. Now, of course, not all complaints can be resolved easily and informally. Occasionally, the watchdog has to show its teeth. And sometimes a formal investigation is warranted. But I can promise you that if and when we do a launch in a formal investigation related to your municipality, you will be informed. You will receive formal notice, and according to our standard practice of over 40 years, you'll have a chance to respond to our findings before any report is released. And I should back up a bit to say there's a dialogue that's ongoing and the lines of communication remain open, and we are always listening to your point of view. And another thing that I stress, because sometimes it's a, it's a misunderstanding amongst the population that the Ombudsman is not an advocate for complainants. We are independent and we are impartial and we investigate. We do not advocate on behalf of the complainants. I like, I like to say we're the referee, we're not in the game. My motto when dealing with uh, all stakeholders is no surprises. So as an Ombudsman promoting procedural fairness, I've always been careful to proceed fairly. Parties are entitled to know what we're looking into and have ample opportunity to have their input considered, as well as receive an explanation of our decisions. This dialogue is crucial because we seek to work collaboratively with you every step of the way. And once again, you can prepare for this simply by putting in place some local accountability mechanisms. 
We have seen quite a lot of variations across municipalities so far. Some have a code of conduct, but no integrity commissioner. Some have neither. If and when we do conduct a formal investigation where this is an issue, I can tell you that I will not hesitate to recommend that the, the municipality take these steps as a way of improving local accountability. Now these days, I'm being asked regularly what our office is doing to encourage and to promote the establishment of accountability officers at the local level. How are we responding to local councils who say there's no need to set up such an office because the Ombudsman will do it for free? And so I checked. And what we have said all along is that our role is not to replace local accountability officers. That would not be feasible, nor would it be advisable. Local problems are best solved locally. And the Ombudsman, the best role for an Ombudsman is as a last resort. Our office has said this in our last two annual reports, our latest province-wide report on closed meetings, and in press releases before and after the implementation of Bill 8. We've said it in articles, interviews, webinars, and at least 30 slide presentations so far. We stress this point in consultations with the, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. But lest there still be any doubt, I'm happy to reiterate it here today. And as often as I need to in the future, I encourage municipalities to have codes of conduct and local accountability officers. This is simply in the best interest of local democracy and the people that we all serve. So my office's role is to ensure that those mechanisms are functioning as they should and to help whenever possible. We can provide recommendations and solutions and best practices to bolster those efforts. And we'll also use our unique position and powers to monitor and address issues that are beyond the scope of local officials outside of their jurisdiction. We constantly track issues that we see across the province, watching for trends or patterns and problems that may be recurring are spreading across municipalities. So our powers of investigation can take us into places where local accountability officers cannot go. And don't forget, if we find the issue relates to bodies in our provincial jurisdiction, we can go there too. So finally, I want to assure you that being prepared for the Ombudsman oversight works both ways. My office has been working to prepare for our oversight of municipalities for more than two years, before Bill 8 was even called Bill 8. Last fall, many of you participated in roundtable discussions in partnership with Canada's Public Policy Forum. And the feedback we received from you was enormously helpful. And I thank you for sharing your expertise and your candid views with us. I've made it a priority to meet and speak to as many stakeholders in our new jurisdiction as I can. And you will see me and my team around the province participating in municipal conferences, trade shows, and workshops in every region. I hope all of this demonstrates our commitment to working with you. We all share the common goal of ensuring transparent, accountable local government. J'espère que tout ceci montre à quel point nous sommes bien préparés pour cette nouvelle responsabilité, ainsi que notre engagement à travailler avec vous. Nous partageons tous le même but commun de garantir la transparence et la responsabilisation au gouvernement local. So thank you again for this opportunity. I recognize that in some contexts, people don't like to say, I hope we meet again. But if we do, I believe it can be a positive experience for you, either to have your practices vindicated by a credible independent ombudsman or to receive constructive feedback that will help you be more responsive to the needs of your stakeholders. In the meantime, I'm happy to answer any questions if time permits this morning. And I invite you to contact my office if you have any questions or there's anything that you would like to discuss. Thanks again for this invitation. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Merci beaucoup et profitez bien du reste de la conférence. Merci. Uh, thanks very much, Paul. To show the efficiency of your office, we're ahead of schedule, so we do have time for uh, some questions. Uh, Matt? Pleasure. I appreciate your, your time, and I also appreciate that you're willing to listen and that you're, you're going to be the referee. And, uh, you know, people really don't like to see you, but I know how you feel. I'm a funeral director. People don't like to see me walk. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's all right. I used to be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you win. You win. Uh, so um, you, you talked several times about accountability officers and
Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Good points made. Uh, what I would say is that we are absolutely open to collaborating and we are here to listen and that's how we're going to learn as much as we can about uh, your challenges. Uh, what I would say is that what we like to see is wh whatever steps you can take to enhance accountability. So uh, coming up with a code of conduct at least. Uh, the, for some municipalities having an accountability officer may not be feasible, but at least having a code of conduct that people can resort to and you know, have that roadmap, have those boundaries for people to, uh, to guide their conduct by, at least that would be a good start. So, thank you. Any other questions? Well, again, I just want to thank everybody. It was an honor to uh, participate in your conference. And uh, if we can be of any assistance uh, to your municipality. Oh, okay. Uh, just another uh, question about accountability officer. Yep. Um, in, as uh, both previous uh, queries have related to the uh, probably impossible nature of hiring a full-time accountability officer, how do you see that in a small community where um, our tax base is of fewer than 2,000 people. Um, do you see it as a, um, an ad hoc position or uh, an appointed position as a volunteer? Um, how, would you, how would you see us dealing with that uh, and yeah. still being able to offer that? Uh, well, consistent with what I said in my remarks that local problems should be solved locally, I'm reluctant to suggest a model for different municipalities. I think that each municipality should determine what is feasible for it. Um, you don't have to necessarily, but I've seen in my short term, this is my fourth or fifth week on the job, uh, in my, the short time I've been here, I've seen different models of accountability officers in the municipalities. Some are on a retainer, some are ad hoc, uh, some are, you know, by an hourly rate. Uh, there are different uh, different flavors available, frankly, and I would, uh, I would just encourage municipalities to explore the options and, and determine what is feasible for each municipality. Okay, okay. okay once again, uh, under the new, excuse me, under the new uh, mandate of the Office of the Ombudsman, uh, more and more of us may have interaction with the office, but as uh, Paul's explained here today, it's as much an educational process as a confrontational process, so I'm sure we work together uh, the solutions are out there. I appreciate your comments today, and we do have a small token appreciation on behalf of the members. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much.